living to please Him. Living to please Him. Now, as you know, we have been preaching about faith in the last uh, a couple of weeks, all right, because we want to see our team fulfilled. Our, the, the second sub team is higher in faith. Or we want to see our team fulfilled. So we want to see every believer of Harvest Revival Center coming up to a level of faith. Rising up to another level of faith. Alright? So this is a faith message. But I've entitled this message, Living to Please Him. Now friends, what I want to tell you is, the most important area in our walk with God, to please Him, most important area in our walk with God, to please Him, is our faith. Everybody say faith. faith. And we're going to ask ourselves to just bow our heads before the Lord and just pray that the Spirit of God will speak to us. Father, we thank you, God, this morning. We thank you for your awesome presence in worship. We thank you for touching us and preparing us in worship, Lord. And now, Father, even as your word goes forth, Father, we pray that you'll cause each one of us, Lord, to receive as from you, Father. And we pray, Lord, that your spirit will stir a deep hunger in our lives to please you like never before. That every one of us, Lord, in Harvest Revival Center will live to please you, Father. Amen. And we pray that your word come forth alive and Lord, stir every heart, Father, that none will leave this place without a touch from you this morning. Amen. Bless your word to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. The text is from Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Hebrews is a, is a chapter of faith, you all know. All right. And then there are a few other scriptures. Uh, John 4, 34 and John 17 and verse 4. Now as we go on, I'll begin to give the scriptures to you. All right. <clears throat> as I told you, the most important area in our walk with God is our faith. All right. Now Hebrews 11, 6 says, And without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. I, I believe that all of you are, are coming to church and you call yourself a, a believer. You have a desire in your heart, I want to please God. I want to please God in my life. I want to please God in my working place. I want to please God in every part of my life. Alright? You said that in your heart, right? Now this morning we're going to see uh, how faith is related to pleasing God. And without faith, it is impossible to please Him. And for whoever would draw near to God, must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. So friends, we are told that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Now what do we mean when we say to please Him? What do we mean when we say to please? You know, to please, if, if you look in any kind of dictionary or concordance, you will find, then we say, to please means to satisfy, all right? To satisfy, to give pleasure to, to thrill, to make someone happy, to delight, to delight, all right? There's a scripture that says, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Delight, to delight, all right? So when you say to please is to delight. You are pleasing the Lord and you delight yourself in the Lord and then He gives you the desires of your heart. Alright? To delight. Now while Jesus was on earth, He had a desire and purpose. His desire and purpose was to please His Father. His desire and purpose was to please His Father in doing His will and to finish the work he has assigned him to do. Alright? Now I'm bringing to you, when Jesus was on earth, his desire and purpose was to please the Father too. You and I want to please God. Jesus wanted to please the Father too. Alright? He wanted to please the Father and, he, he, and to please his Father. How? In doing his will, the Father's will, and to finish the work that his Father has assigned to him. And that's why Jesus uh, said to them in John 4 and 34, he says, he says, My food is to do the will of him who sent me. And then the last part says, and to finish his work. Alright, let me read that part again to you so you can catch it. And that's why he said, my food is to do his will, to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. To please the father, he had to do two things. He had to do the will of God. At the same time, he had to finish 
the work that God assigned for him to do. And that's how Jesus fulfilled and pleased the Father. That's how he did it. All right? So we need to understand, friends, that every time we want to please God, we've got to do the will of God. There could be seasons in your life where you're going through different seasons in your life and you come to a place where you are stuck. You come to a place that you feel that nothing is happening to you. You've come to a place that you have come, become so dry. Something has happened that is a season in your life. And you and I need to know the season of, of your life and the will of God for that season. The will of God in that season. If you're going through a period of dryness, if you're going through a period of disappointment, that's the season that you're going to go through. And God, God wants us to find out His will for the season and how to react and how to live in that season. Alright? It's the will of God that is so important. And it's also important to know if God has called you for something, He wants you to complete that which He has called you to. Amen. Just like how Jesus said, I want to just call, uh, finish the work that, that the Father gave me to do. And he wants to completely uh, uh, do and complete what the Father has given him to do. So if you want to please God, if he has God called you to a ministry, he has called you for something in the church or, or in, in, in any ministry, when you start that work, you've got to finish that work because God called you to do that. Hallelujah. You know, the problem with many believers and many leaders, what we do, we start off something very well and after some time we give up because there is no, there is no fruit in that. We quickly give up. Now I tell you, that I know a missionary couple, an American missionary, who was in, 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 in Bangladesh for many years. For the first five years, they only saved three souls. They only saved three souls. They could have said after the second year, after the third year, they're going to say, ah, enough is enough. Lah. Someone is Bangladesh, is so bad, so difficult place. I better go back to America. But they stayed on until the Lord told them that it's time, your season is over. Alright? So these people remained there, even though it was five years that three souls, three Muslim people came to the Lord and today they are in the church. You know, the angels rejoice because three Muslims came to the Lord. And that was the purpose for which God brought this couple all the way from U.S. come to a place, a very a village area in Bangladesh. So you begin to see the will of God and accomplishing and fulfilling what God has called you. So in the kingdom of God, there is no such thing as quitting. I served in some area, I know I quit, like I cannot read up. There's no such thing as quitting. You know why? You've got to complete what God has called you to do. That's how Jesus fulfilled. That's how Jesus uh, pleased the Father. So if you and I want to please the Father, we, when we start something, we complete it. You know, in John 17 and verse 4, uh, when he has finished his ministry, Jesus says, I have glorified you on earth. He tells the Father, I have glorified you on earth. And then he says, I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Amen. See, I have glorified you on earth and I have finished the work which you have given me to do. So church, this morning, to live the Christian life, to, and to please the Lord Jesus Christ. Basically, there are just three things that you need to do. One is, we have to do His will. Secondly, we have to finish His work. It's not, it's not how, how well we start that matters to Him. It is how well we, we finish, how strong we finish. Amen. How strong we are at the end. That is what matters to God. Alright, we may start well, but if we give up halfway, we don't finish well and we don't, we, not, we don't finish strong. And thirdly, we have to have an ongoing intimate relationship with the Lord. If you and I have an ongoing intimate relationship with God, you will know your season that you are in. If you are in an ongoing relationship with God, you will know the will of God for you for now. The ongoing relationship will actually give you discernment in your spirit to know what God wants to you to do now. The ongoing relationship. You want to please the Lord? The ongoing relationship will show you the will of God for you now 
and the ongoing relationship will help you to sustain, to complete that work that he has called you to. It's an ongoing relationship. It's an ongoing relationship you begin to see and God will strengthen us. So friends, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, faith is like a multifaceted diamond. You all know about diamonds, right? If you look at a diamond, you turn in different positions, you see it shines. In different positions, it shines. Right? It's a multifaceted uh, 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 diamond. Diamond is multifaceted. All right? Now, similarly, faith has many different aspects. Faith has many different aspects. And this morning, I'm sharing with you some aspects of faith of how to live the kind of life that pleases God. How to live the kind of life that pleases God. All right? Now, when we read Hebrews chapter 11, we see a list of all the heroes of faith. Now, we all know that, heroes of faith. God says, they were men and women of real faith. You look at some of the versions in the Bible in Hebrews 11. It says, God says, they were men and women of real faith. Real faith. They have set an example in faith for us to follow. Right? So, some of the aspects of faith for us to live, to please Him. I'm going to just share very briefly. Just catch what the Spirit of God is telling you this morning. All right? It's a very simple thing. I'm talking to you, very simple message. But in that simple message, has to be, that has to birth within you and change your life. And you become transformed by the Word, Amen. by the power of the Word, that you live to please the Lord. Amen? To live to please the Lord. Now, first one is, faith is obeying when you don't understand it. Faith is obeying when you don't understand. In Hebrews 11 and verse 7, By faith, Noah being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. Now, by, the, by this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Now friends, can you imagine if God came to you today, and he tells you, look here friend, I'm going to destroy the whole world and I'm going to start all over. He comes and tells you, look here, I'm going to destroy the whole world. I'm going to start all over with you and your family alone. But what I want you to do is, I want you to build an ark. Build a big ship and you and your household will be saved. Now how many of us would, would have uh, had reservations and doubted thinking that something is wrong. Most of us would have said, ah, that cannot be God. That cannot be God, would have said. All right? Some of us said, oh, maybe I heard wrongly. That cannot be from God. Because you can't understand such a major ridiculous plan. That was the plan of God. Such a a major ridiculous plan of God and he says he wants to wipe up the whole world and he's going to save Noah and his family. Now I want you to note here two important words in the scripture we just read. One is by faith. Second is reverent fear. Reverent fear. Alright? Now reverent fear is the word for obedience. Out of honor and fear of the Lord, you're obeying. All right, reverent fear is the word for obedience. So what we need to understand, friends, faith is obeying when you don't understand it. When it does not make sense. When it doesn't make sense. Faith is obeying when you don't understand it and when it does not make sense. Now, Noah, we all know about Noah. Noah would have all had, had all kinds of questions in his mind. He would have had all kinds of questions in his mind because it had never happened before. In Genesis 2 and 5, the Bible says that before the flood, it had never rained. Before the flood, it had never rained. Alright, the Bible says in Genesis 2 and 5. Now, when, when God said to Noah, He said, uh, Noah, come here. I want you to build this up because it's going to flood. Because it's going to flood. Alright? Now, Noah would have asked, Noah would have questioned God, and he said, Flood? What do you mean, flood? 
The Bible says it has never rained before, right? Okay? In Genesis 2, 5. And when, when God told Noah to build an ark, Noah could have out responded to, 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 Noah, to God and said, flood. And, and, and what, what do you mean, flood? He's never heard the word flood. Okay? Then God responded, responds to Noah and he says, flood is when you get a lot of rains. When you get a lot of rains. And then Noah walks, okay, he walks, talk, he talks back to God and says, Lord, what do you mean? What do you mean if a rain? What does, what does that mean, rain? Because there was there never been rain before, the Bible says. So Noah didn't know what is flood. He didn't know what is rain. Okay? And then, and, 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 and he, he would have asked the Lord, Lord, what do you mean with this rain? What exactly is rain? And then God may have explained, it's like when I take the lake, and pour out it, pour the lake from the sky on you. Then it floods. <laughs> this is just an explanation to show what conversation could have been. Alright, it's not in the word, alright? God didn't say, I'll take the lake and pour on you and make it rain and flood. This is just to explain, Noah didn't know what is flood because it never happened before the scripture said. He never knew what is floods. He never knew what is rain. And he never knew anything. He couldn't understand what God is telling him to do. To Noah, it was ridiculous to build a big ark, a big ship, a big ship with 450 long, uh, long, 45 feet high and 75 feet in the width. So to Noah, it is ridiculous first of all. Alright? And Noah didn't understand flood, he doesn't understand rain, didn't know what God was actually talking. But Noah, because he had faith, obeyed even though it didn't make sense. Even though it didn't make sense, Noah obeyed because he had faith. Alright? He had faith. Now, another example of faith is being obedient to, 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 to God. But you didn't know anything. Is Abraham. We all know Abraham. Alright? What happened to Abraham? Abraham, uh, by faith, Abraham obeyed and he was called to go to a place for his inheritance. Alright? For his inheritance, he was called to, to go to another place and he went not knowing where he was going. He went somewhere that he didn't know where he was going. Now, look, just think of it for a while, right? Now, when Abraham was 75 years old at the time, he, it, it was time for retirement. It was time for retirement, and he says, well, we're getting old now, and uh, it's time for retirement, and it's better to settle in this homeland. Better to settle in the homeland. Now, God told Abraham at that time, when he felt that it's time to retire, God told him that he's going to make him a father of nations. And then he tells him, get out of your homeland and go to that place I will show you. Now here again, Abraham could have questioned God, where are we going? Where are we going? He would have questioned God. It's like God telling him, take one step at a time and I will lead you with the next step. God said, just go. Leave this homeland and go. And I was thinking about this, this situation. I thought, Abraham could have said, Lord, at least tell me where they are going, how long it's going to take, because I have to convince my wife to approve from that place. How many of you know that it's so difficult for wives to approve their homes after settling down? Nobody is saying yes. <laughs> Only I know. <laughs> Alright, do you know you stay in a place and you're settled, you just completed a nice renovation for your house, you got all the nice beautiful down lights and color lights and everything and, and everything is done, you're settled, now I'm retiring and God says, get up and go. It's difficult, right? It's difficult to uproot and, and, and go. But what happens to Abraham? Abraham obeyed even when it didn't make sense. Alright? Faith often involves taking risks, as I told you last week, two weeks ago. Faith always involves taking risks. So what we need to understand, friends, many of us are being led by God, but we come to a place where we get stuck and we don't know the next step. Sometimes we feel that we are led by God, but we come to a place we don't know we are stuck, we don't know what to do. Now what we need to understand is, when we take the first step as God says, 
as you take the first step as God says you obey God, then, then he will guide you to the next step. If you did not take the first step by faith, he is not going to guide you for the second step. He is a God of order, you know. You take the first step, he will show you the second step. If you don't want to take the first step, you say, I feel God is telling me, but I dare not take the first step. Doesn't that sound familiar? It sounds very familiar to me. Many times I knew God wanted me to take, but I'm not sure. I'm afraid if I take the step, what will happen? But we need to come to the place of faith, friends, to understand that as we take the step of faith and obey God, He will guide us to the next step. So friends, we have to step out in faith, even if it appears risky and even if it's costly. Alright? That's faith. So secondly, faith is believing when you don't see it. Faith is believing when you don't see it. You know, when you, when you see something, it's easy for you to believe. But the Bible says, blessed are those who believe when you have not seen. When eyes have not seen, but you believe. Blessed are those, the Bible says. Blessed are those. So my point here is, faith is believing when you don't see. Now faith, as you know the, the, the definition, it is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you say evidence, it means conviction. Something that you hope for, but you have a conviction. You have a conviction that is your evidence within you. It has happened. It has taken place. That is faith. All right. So faith, uh, faith is something you hope for. The evidence, a conviction that you have in your spirit that it has already done. Like we believe that a miracle that we have prayed for has happened. But we have not seen the evidence of it. But there is a conviction within you that God has done it and God has healed you. All right. And then faith means we cannot see the outcome, but we know for certain, but we know for certain that we will eventually have victory because we place our trust in God. We don't know the outcome, that's faith. You don't know the outcome, but still you obey because you know that eventually you have victory because we have placed our trust in Him. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. If Jesus has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, why is it so difficult for believers to completely trust Him when we don't see? Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In other words, Jesus says, I will keep my word. That means you don't have to worry. But it's so difficult for us to trust and take the first step. We say, when we take the first step, then we fall into the pit. But Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So when you take, listen, hear from God and take the first step, He will make sure He sustains you. He sustains you. Alright? Now, there's another, there's an example here about faith is believing when you don't see. Now, remember the, the Shunammite woman? Now this is found in 2 Kings chapter 4. Uh, you can write it down, but we're not going to read the whole portion because it's too long. Alright? Um, the, the, uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 to 37. Now, what happened was, there was a, the Shunammite woman and her husband actually had invited Prophet Elisha to their house and gave him, gave him accommodation. Maybe they prepared the guest room and, and gave him accommodation. Alright? Now what happened one day that this lady's only son suddenly died. The lady's only son suddenly died and what she did was she took the son and then and put the son and the dead son on Elisha's bed. When they put on Elisha's bed, and Elisha was not there around at that time, so what they did was, this lady started going around from place to place looking for Elisha to get help for, for, for God to, to, to heal through this man of God, Elisha. Now, the way to, on, on the way to Elisha, uh, to Elisha, what happens was, the husband and those who are around her asked her, is everything okay with you? And she said, it is well. It is well. She said, it is well. Now, I, I believe the song that came, it is well, it is well with my soul, could have originated from this Old Testament scripture, I don't know. It is well. Elisha's, I mean, the, this lady, my woman, said, it is well. Her son is dead. And she says, it is well. How come? Her son is dead. She said, it is well. Now, what happens, friends? 
And finally they found Elisha. Elisha came to a house and restored the life of the child by praying to God. You know what happened friends? Because this woman believed that she didn't see. When she saw her son not breathing anymore, heart is not beating anymore, but she still went with faith, running to see the prophet of God to bring him because he, she believed that her son will become alive again. So she believed when, without seeing what could happen. And what happened was, her faith was honored, right? You know that? Elisha came, prayed, and the child came to life. Imagine, friends, Believing when you don't see it. Believing when you don't see it. It is something that is so powerful because you stood in faith. You stood in faith, alright? So faith is believing when you don't see it. Now friends, in demonstrating faith, we are not sure what the future holds. But we are sure of who holds the future. That's demonstrating faith. You're demonstrating faith because you know you believe in a God who's a miracle working God. You believe in a God who can do anything. Nothing is impossible with Him. You believe in that God. So in demonstrating faith, what happens is you know who you believe. Who holds that future. This morning some of you are sitting here are so troubled about your future of your children. As I'm preparing this message, the Spirit of God was telling me that many of you, many of you are, 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 are troubled of what my children are going to do. What is my son's future? There is a fear of the future, the future of your child. You were prayed and you never got an answer. And you said, what is going to be the future of my son or my child, my daughter? You came here this morning feeling in your heart, oh, and there's so trouble. I want you to be reminded in this service, friends. Just know who holds that future. It is Jesus Christ, the miracle working God, is holding your future, holding the child's future. He knows better than you. You begin to think, oh, 10 years time, what will happen? You are so worried about 10 years time for your child. But God knows from the time your child was born until the child was going to go to, going to, go to heaven, the, the Lord knows them very well every step of the way. So all you do is trust in the God who knows it all. Trust in the God who you can believe 100% that when you believe it's done. Alright, because you don't know the future, but just know that who holds that future. Alright, who holds the future. So friends, we have to believe it before it happens. Before it happens. Like the Shunammite woman who rushed in faith. Who rushed in faith to see Elisha. Faith was honored. You and I, friends, we were talking about these aspects of faith, all right? I said, obedience when you don't understand it, believing when you don't see it. These aspects of faith are supposed to be applied in our life when we want to please Him. You know, the Lord is so excited and so pleased when you believe even without knowing what is the end result. God is so excited when you obeyed, when you didn't understand, because you knew that God is a sovereign God and you trusted Him completely. You know what you have done? You have pleased the Lord. That's how the Lord is pleased. Without faith, it's not, it's not possible to, 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 to please Him. So here, that's how, by obeying Him, by believing in Him, you are pleasing the Lord. Our daily walk with God has got to be with these aspects of faith. Third one is a very familiar one. We have said it many times before. Faith is giving when you don't have it all. Faith is giving when you don't have it all. Now giving and faith goes together. God sometimes uh, uh, uses finances to test our faith. You may have come to a place in your life or what, when you have just enough and you realize that I've not given my tithes this morning. I, I'm not this morning. I've not given your tithes, and at the same time, you have just enough to pay your bill. Now here is a test: whether you would pay the bill or pay the tithes first, offering to God first, or pay the bill first. All right. Now here is a test of faith, and you find that you have just enough. But here, God is saying to us, "My promise is to take care of you if you put me first. Remember Matthew 6.33 Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all the other things He will add on to you. Alright? God is telling you He will take care of you. 
At the same time, we are now in a place of making a decision whether to pay my bill first or give my offerings unto God. Seeking first the kingdom of God, you are honored in your faith. And God is so pleased when His people put Him first in their life. Priority. Sometimes we start off putting Him first and then comes our businesses. We get so involved with our businesses. We are so busy with our business and the priority is gradually diverted. But when you want to please Him as a Christian as a, in the work of God, as you want to please Him, you've got to set your priorities back and put Him first. Then He's pleased. All right? these, are, these are things that are aspects I'm telling you is a day-to-day -day day walk with God. How we really please Him in, in our walk with God. Right? Faith is giving when you don't have all of it. Now, now Hebrews 11 and verse 4, By faith, Abraham offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commanded as righteous. Now why? Why did, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Abel, why was Abel commanded as righteous? Why? It was, wasn't how much he gave, it wasn't what he gave, but it was the attitude in which he gave. He gave sacrificially unto God. Alright? That's why Abel was commanded as righteous. Okay? Now, giving by faith pleases God. Giving by faith pleases God. Yeah. Friends, we need to know we cannot outgive God. We cannot outgive God. The more we give in faith, the more He gives back. Amen. Now, wherever we give, whenever we give in faith, God always shows up at the right time. When you are given in faith, knowing that you have just had enough, He will come and He will meet your need at the right time. Because He honors you of your faith that you, you operated on, He comes at the right time. Amen. Now some people may say, God, you give me first, then I will give you, I will give you Lord. Lord, you give me the money first, then I will give you. Alright? It is just like saying, Lord, let me strike the lottery, then I'll give you more money, Lord. Let me strike the lottery, then I'll give you more money, Lord. You know, that's not faith. Alright? That's not faith. Faith is giving when you don't have it all. That's faith. Right, that's number three. The fourth one, faith is thanking God before you receive it. Alright, some of us know this, some of us are already operating on this. Faith is thanking God before you receive it. Now, many of us who are Christians are not operating in this. There are many who are, there are many who are not operating in this aspect of faith. Alright, faith is thanking God before you receive it. Now, John chapter 11, verses 41 to 46. John 11, 41 to 46. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you, you that you have heard me. He said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. Look at how Jesus responded to his father. Before it happened, he went to the tomb of Lazarus. All right? Now, but because, and he says, because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. He cried out. And when he, had, and when he cried out, what happened was this dead Lazarus came out of the tomb. Came out of the tomb, he was bound hand and feet with grave clothes, and his face was covered with cloth. And uh, and then Jesus said, uh, "Lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go." All right now, friends, at this time, then many of the Jews who had come there to see Mary believed, believed the power of Jesus. They believed, but there are others. Some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them. That, that what the things that Jesus did. The Pharisees they told them, they to, the, to the Pharisees. Now, what we see here, friends, that Jesus himself, before he prayed for Lazarus to come forth alive, he looks to the Father and said, Thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for listening to my prayer. So before it happened, before he prayed, he started thanking the Father. All right? Now, that was a New Testament scripture. Now I will show you another portion in the Old Testament. You also know about that. So why I'm saying this from the Old Testament and New Testament? Because these aspects of faith are supposed to be practiced by every believer. 
we suppose we are practicing in our daily walk if we want to please God. If we want to please God, right? Second Chronicles 20, 18 to 23. Jehoshaphat, talking about the king Jehoshaphat, bowed his face to the ground. The people of the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some of the Levites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. All right, Jehoshaphat's uh, uh, Levite stood up and started praising God aloud. And then Jehoshaphat stood up and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. He said what? Have faith in the Lord, Amen. your God. Have faith in your, the Lord, your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in His prophets and you will be successful. Have faith in the prophets and you will be successful. And then verse 22, 21 says, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and praise Him for the splendor of His holiness. As they went out at the head of the army, saying what? Saying, giving thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever. Now what has happened here is, Jehoshaphat has appointed people to go in front of their army. Army is going to fight against the enemy. To go in front of the army and sing praises and thank God. They don't know whether they're going to be defeated in the war. They don't know. But here Jehoshaphat tells them, trust in the Lord, in the Lord of God and have faith, he says. And then he says that the, that the singers, those who are praising and thanking God, go in front of the army. What In the natural, what could have happened? The enemy would have just shoot all the people in the front. All the Levites did. But here Jehoshaphat told them, go in the front and start singing and praising and, and giving thanks to the Lord for His love and yours forever. Alright? And as they began to sing and praise the Lord, uh, the Lord set ambushes against the enemy. Amen. And what happened? Uh, they, they, they were defeated. The enemy was defeated. So what has happened, friends? Even before the war started, even before the, the, the enemy was come, uh, come, come, to come against them, even before that, they began to thank God and began to praise Him. When they started doing that, they were defeated. So what is this aspect that you and I must learn to please God in our daily walk with Him? This aspect is, faith is thanking God in advance. Faith is thanking God in advance. You pray for something, it hasn't taken place, you start thanking God. You don't come to prayer and Lord give me this, Lord God give me this, and then tomorrow you come again, Lord please give me, Lord please give me, Lord, and you keep begging God. Our God is not a beggar, you don't have to beg from Him. Our God is a Father, we are His children. We come to Him, say, you, after you, you have asked Him to do something for you, you come again and again, Lord I thank you God, I know you are going to give this to me. I thank you God, you are going to create a miracle for me. I thank you Lord, something good is happening, happening to my son. I, I thank you God, you begin to thank God in faith. And I tell you, the aspect of faith, faith is thanking God in advance. Every believer, now as Bible Center and everywhere, need to understand this concept, this aspect. Most of us, when something comes well, then we say, thank you, Lord. Now we are going to change. We are going to, learn, we are going to live to please Him. That's the message. We are going to live to please Him. So how you please Him? By starting thanking God before it takes place. Before you receive the miracle. Alright? All right, the fifth one. Faith is trusting, trusting if you don't get it. Faith is trusting if you don't get it. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, many people take God as a machine. They take God as a machine and they think that automatically uh, God will give you anything, uh, anything. And, but the fact is, fact is, we need to understand is, God doesn't give everything to every, everybody. Why do I say that? Because our God knows what is good for you. He will never give you anything that is bad for you. Alright? So some Christians think, oh, God, God is like a machine. We just go and say a prayer and everything will be given to you. Alright? That's a wrong concept. Now, God will never give us something that's bad for us. Now, does a parent give a child everything the child wants? No. <coughs> The parent will not give the child everything they want. If the parent is very sensible, caring and loving, they will not give the child everything that he wants. Alright? Now, can, would, would, with your five-year-old child, for, for his birthday or her birthday, would you buy a birthday gift which is a pen knife for your five-year-old child? No parent will do that. Alright? Anything that will hurt him, the father or mother will not give. 
It's the same thing with God. God will never give you anything that you that will harm you or hurt you. So you should pray and pray and pray. And God knows that is not what you need. That is not what uh, uh, what will be good for you. And God withholds it. All right. God withholds it. Uh, <clears throat> Will you give your, your children uh, um, uh, uh, a pornographic material and say, son, when you're free, you just look at this, uh, I will just look at this pornographic material. Will you do that? You will never do that because you will do harm to our child. All right? Anything that is not good for you, God will not give you. All right? A friend, God is certainly not going to give you everything that you want. He said what? He said, I will meet all your needs. He said, I will meet all your needs. He doesn't say, I will meet all your greed. <laughs> he didn't say, I will meet all your greed. He said, I will meet all your needs. All right? God is not some kind of a machine, I told you. With just one prayer, automatically everything comes. There are times that you don't have. And the, the Lord says, wait. There are times the Lord says, no. Okay? Now, remember Paul's, Paul said in, in Philippians 4, 11 to 13, he says, I am not saying this because I am in need, Paul says, okay? Uh, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. And verse 12 says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being confident in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. That's Paul saying. After he says that, what does he say? After he says that, he says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Amen. So what Paul is saying is, in need and in plenty, in need or in plenty, he still can go through it because God is strengthens him. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. That's what Paul is saying, all right? Okay, so friends, what we need to understand is God is more interested in, in our character than, than in our comfort and wealth. God is more interested in our character more than our comfort and health, wealth. God is more interested in making us holy than making me happy. God is more interested in making us holy. Now, faith is trusting God even when I don't get the answer that I expected or that, or that I wanted. All right, and Hebrews 11, just one, one more scripture before we go. Uh, Hebrews 11, 39 and 40. This is talking about in the, in the Hebrews itself. And all these, though, commend, uh, though uh, commended through their father, did not receive what was promised. They all did not receive what was promised. Hebrews, huh? all right. Since God had promised something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. So friends, living by faith, does not exempt Christians from problems. Living by faith does not exempt Christians from problems. Alright? Tell you all, once I become a Christian, I accept the Lord. From now onwards, it's a bed of roses. It's not a bed of roses. If it was, now think of that. The intense persecution Christians are going through in many parts of the world. Think of some of these people, Christians who are living in faith. They're standing up for their, for their faith and they're going through persecution. So it's wrong for us to say living by faith doesn't mean once we live by faith, or oh, everything, uh, there's no problems, nothing, we will just be smooth sailing. Alright? But there are a lot of Christians with faith, standing for their faith, and they are going through persecution. Jesus prayed in the Garden of Eden. That he said, My God, my God, if it's possible, take this cup away from me, the cup of suffering, take it away from me, it will be possible. But he said, Nevertheless, let your will be done. He still, even in the suffering, he wanted to do his father's will. Even in the suffering. He wanted to do the father's will. Alright? And sometimes we pray for God to remove our problems. Sometimes we pray to God to remove our problems. But instead, he keeps the problem there. He keeps the problem there. And gives us strength to go through it. He gives us strength to go through every situation. Every problem. That's why Paul can say, I can do all things in, truth, in Christ who strengthens me. In persecution, in people beating me up, people mocking me, I can still go through it. Because he, he says, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. 
So friends, if you're going through difficult circumstances, don't condemn yourself, oh, maybe I have less faith. Maybe I don't have faith, that's why I'm going through all these problems. But he will give you strength. When you know, when Paul had a thorn in the flesh, he prayed three times for the thorn in the flesh to be healed. But what did, what did God says? My, my, what? my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So he didn't take away the thorn from Paul. He let him have the thorn, but he says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. That's what he said. All right? Okay. So faith, friends, faith is to keep trusting God in all situations. Because when you go through the difficult situations, you come out of the situation stronger. You come out of your problems stronger. You come out of your situations with greater faith, higher faith. You come out stronger. All right? All right. So faith is keeping, keep trusting God in all situations. Now in conclusion, in conclusion, if you desire to live for God and to please Him, that's the message today, right? To please Him. If you desire to live for God and to please Him, apply these aspects of faith in your daily walk. <laughs> apply this. In daily walk with God, what do you need to do? Obey Him when you can't understand what's going on. Just obey Him. Begin, believe Him even if you don't, if you don't see it. Believe Him because He's a God who's sovereign. Believe Him. Give as unto the Lord even if you don't have it all. Give as unto the Lord. Thank Him always. Thank Him always. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. Remember the scripture in Thessalonians? In everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. So friends, thank Him always. Live a life of thanksgiving before you receive your breakthroughs. Start thanking Him before you receive your breakthroughs. If you're looking for a job, thank you God for the right job. Amen. If you're looking for healing, thank you God for healing. If you're looking for a miracle for your child, thank you God for this miracle. I keep trusting you. Thank you God. It may take long. Sometimes it's long suffering. Long suffering. But keep trusting in the Lord. Because our God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still the same. He never changes. Your situation, your circumstances changes, but He never changes. So keep trusting Him. Keep trusting Him, friends. So friends, keep trusting God even if you haven't received your breakthroughs. No, when you operate in faith, when you operate in faith, applying these aspects of faith, you will please the Lord. You will live to please the Lord. I trust that all of you sitting here want to please the Lord. If you don't want to please the Lord, this message is not for you. But I'm sure, I, I trust that every one of you sitting here, you are a child of God. You want to please the Lord. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back to take you and I. You and I need to come to, to the priority and say, God, I want to please you. I want to go back with you when you come to, to take us back. You and I need to please Him. Alright? So, the operative faith, applying these aspects, you will live to please Him. So friends, remember, for without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Amen? Alright, stand with me as the musicians come quickly. Stand with me and we're going to close.